And hello and welcome to CNBC Africa on assignment. We're here in Dubai at the All Africa Festival. My name is Tanya Habimana. Let's come and listen in and find out more. Music, food and arts all wrapped into a single event. The All Africa Festival born from the minds of wife and husband duo. The All Africa's festival's single purpose is to celebrate the African culture in Dubai. The event focuses on bringing cultural experiences through music, entertainment, fashion, art and many other expressions of culture. We caught up with the founders of the All Africa Festival at Effie Gallery, an African contemporary art gallery based in Dubai. Nina, so you don't necessarily like the term founder. Yes. You prefer to say that, you, that the All Africa Festival was your brainchild. Now, why is that? Um, the reason why is, well, yes, I am a co-founder and I always use the term co-founder. It's it's a collective, it came as a collective conversation with many different people. The weight of being the founder, in my opinion, would be an incorrect just to use the founder. And that's because between myself and my partners, um, we have built something beautiful that, yes, while I was the brainchild and I navigated it to where we are now, it couldn't be exactly what it was without all of them. Wow. So it's our collective shared founding thing that we have founded. That's beautiful. Um, tell me, did you imagine that it would become this big? Um, no. Well, I, I, I say no, but the reality is when we thought about it, we thought about it for it to be the biggest one of its kind in the world. But I think saying it and actually seeing it happen two are two different <laughs> things. I mean, if you had asked me when we started this and, and when we had our partnership with Imar last year and the first event at Bodge Park, I would have said, oh, you know what, let's give it five years. But um, I'm going into year two and I'm sat here talking to CNBC Africa and I'm like, okay, it's, it's going. <laughs> both from Nigeria, you studied in the UK, you've been together since university years, and then one day you up and leave and come to Dubai. Tell me about that. How did that conversation happen? Well, um, I haven't been in the UK for a while. Uh, we're looking to explore all the opportunities elsewhere. And uh, I've taken a few contracts out in the Middle East and gone back to the UK. And, uh, one morning we felt that we could uh, push the boundaries a bit more and go for more adventures mm -hmm. and then she got an opportunity here in Dubai at the time she was working in Turkey in Istanbul and then um, we decided to go for it and we came to Dubai and we said let's try it out and see how it goes and now eight years on <laughs> we're still here and how's it been? Uh, let me put it this way, I don't think we're living anytime soon. Wow, okay, that's quite a <laughs> statement. But then tell me, All Africa Festival, you're in charge of the operations. Um, maybe it's an assumption on my side, but it feels like in a place like Dubai, everything is working, right? Everything is slick and organized and structured, but I'm sure probably I'm only seeing a certain side to it. How, how does that look like from your perspective? That's absolutely correct. Everything in Dubai is working because they've got a very big team behind the scenes that is making sure all the operations are working. So hosting an event of this magnitude, you need a lot of workforce to make sure everything, all the permits, all the necessary details that has to be done during the event, everything has to be spot on. Who came up with the idea? Uh, I would guess uh, is the founder because uh, the original idea that we had was doing like a food festival but over the years the team changed and um, based on feedback we had gotten from earlier events that we had done 
uh, a lot of people came around and said, "Wow, I love this event, but I'm, an, I, 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 I'm, I'm a Caribbean. I'm, you know, I'm Jamaican, but I don't see my story being told here on the stage." So, over the years, based on feedback that we got from the community, because we're very community focused, we then uh, created uh, an advisory group with people of African descent from various parts of the world. Uh, that we all have conversations, meaningful conversations, to try and see what are we lacking, what story are we not telling, who are we not representing, and try and bring everything to light. It's good to meet you. Good to meet you too. So I understand Effie Gallery was um, founded with your mom, your brother and yourself. You're all co-founders, all directors. What's it like doing business with family? It's fun for the most part. Of course there's the stress but since we all have the same vision we've been working together and there's, there's a lot of union, a lot of unity so it's good and hopefully it'll stay good. That's a good thing to hear. Yeah. But tell me, what was the vision when you first started? So, FE Gallery started as one exhibition, and I'll go back to Genesis. So, Tim and Nina of All Africa Festival came to us looking for an investment in what at the time was called African Food Festival. So, we got our network together and asked around who would want to be invested in, in this project. And Ema came back to us saying that they sectioned Birch Park as a location for the festival. So we went back to Nina and Tim saying this is great news but possibly you should scale up. It could be more than uh, a food festival. Yeah. And then we said, uh, how about we name it All Africa Festival? And then the question was, what does it mean to have an All Africa Festival? Because Africa is often misrepresented as one homogenous group. So we don't want to be adding to that narrative. Yeah. So we decided to have different mediums. We had film, music and art. But the art already started as a record gallery which is upstairs in the gallery where me and my brother collect old vinyl records, predominantly from Africa, and we wanted to exhibit these records at the festival with the whole idea that vinyl records are, are truly art. And then we said, what well, about an actual art exhibition? So we reached out to loads of galleries across Africa and Europe, asking if they would want to exhibit some African, African art pieces in the festival, and they all turned us down, saying that it would devalue their brand. So we said, either we do it ourselves or there's no art, art exhibition. So together with Quenya Foundation, we got to, together a good roster of artists, including James Barna, Isha Ismail, Yawus, who's behind us, uh, Salon. And then uh, the final, should we say, the cherry on top was locating Ellen Natri, who was graceful enough to give us free works. Um, we were very naive in asking for free works. We didn't know how, how impressive it was to have free works until the festival happened and the exhibition occurred and people from the art industry were like louding us saying how do you have this many LNA trees and we didn't really have a good answer because we, we, were, we were very naive in our approach so that's how it started and then after the reaction we had we decided to open a permanent space which we're now sitting in in March with a solo exhibition of LNA trees works. <laughs> goes wrong? What, what goes wrong here? Mm. What are some of the challenges that you experience? So uh, I'll give you a typical example. Last year was the first time we did it at Borch Park in partnership with Ima. Uh, there was COVID and we're just coming out of COVID and the COVID test was a great restriction on what people could do and people couldn't do. Our artist lineup was I think we announced on the days of the event because it depends on if the artist actually made it through, through the airport and making sure that they were in COVID positive. So it was a bit touch and go. There was a lot that was going on in the back end for at the festival, no one ever noticed what was really going on if maybe a band member of the artist has, not, has made it to Dubai but is in quarantine. So oh, there were wow. a lot of challenges. Yeah, of course. And COVID-19 affected all of us. And I mean, the guests not noticing that anything went wrong is a 
a sign of, uh, of good operational skills there. But you mentioned um, that there's a big team behind all of this. What's been your experience of building a team and building systems and processes here in Dubai? Like in any parts of the world, uh, if you have the right team, then you'll be able to deal with the external challenges. Or sometimes you do have a lot of things lost in uh, diversity and con uh, conversations amongst people. So in order for you to be able to execute properly, you have to be 100% very clear with the directives you're giving out to the team on what to execute. And there are no rooms for errors and there's no second take. So you have to be on your toes on there, even though you have three, four project managers working on the project, you yourself have to be there supervising to make sure things go well. I mean, last year we had our floor plan and everything approved and as we're beginning to build out the stage, it turns out that the soil around there was a bit soft, so we had to move and change our floor plan overnight. So <laughs> that was a lot, a lot of hard work. After the break, we continue the journey with the co-founders of the All Africa Festival and meet with some of the upcoming performers. Welcome back and before the break we met with the co-founders of the All Africa Festival and discussed the challenges that they were faced with birthing the All Africa Festival concept and how partnering with the stakeholders who share the same vision was important. How did this come about? Did you sense that there was a need from the or a desire to see something like this from the African community um, and also I mean because this is All Africa so why All Africa? So when we first started getting in this event, um, it used to be a food festival. So it used to be an Africa food festival. It was really something small for people who are from the continent to get together. And um, I started it with a different partnerships that I have than the ones I have now. And when we did it for the second time, and it was in a small park in Dubai, so it wasn't anything as big as what we are doing now. Um, on, on the evening or in the evening, I was walking around the park and I, I met two people, and these two people are actually part of my planning committee today. Oh, wow. And um, one of them is a photographer that's based here, um, Del Roy Sims, and he coached me on some cultural things that happened on the stage that weren't actually nice from an African-American perspective and a Caribbean perspective, and that was a learning point for me. And then the next person I met was um, Kylie Charles, and um, she's known as Black Girl in Dubai, where she promotes black businesses. And she is um, Jamaican-British, and she's like, you know what, Nina, this is amazing, I love this. But where am I in this story? Where is my story in this story? And then COVID-19 happened, and we had to pause for 2020. But as I started to ponder the idea of what is next, what does it mean, I internalized it in a way. And I thought of my kids. So I'm living with my two sons in Dubai, who, as they grow up, might decide to move to Australia, Alaska, or stay in Dubai. Yeah. They might start their own families, and they will have their own children. And I'm like, so what, is, what does Africa mean in that perspective? And that, as I started to think and untangle that, I was like, all Africa. Because culture evolves, our narratives will be different. You know, people might say, you know what, Nina is not a typical Nigerian, but what is a typical Nigerian? I was born there, I grew up there. Exactly. And now I'm here and my experiences have changed who I am, but I always say in my heart, um, I am African first and my DNA is Nigeria and it doesn't matter where I live. So that birthed the All Africa Festival and then um, COVID, I had a lot of time to do a lot of research. I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I started to look at just the beauty of African culture around the world. You know, look at, you know, the, the things that have come and the, you know, the popular cultures that have grown from African American culture, um, looking at Afro-Cuban culture and just how ingrained that culture is in the Yoruba culture from Nigeria. Very you true. know, looking at Brazil, looking at 
looking at the UK, looking at everywhere, but more importantly, even Afro-Middle Eastern culture. I think a lot of the times we're based here in the Middle East, but there is a rich African culture that's Afro-Middle Eastern that has grown over time just based on people's experiences and migration. And sometimes those stories are not told or shared. And all Africa, that's why all Africa. So this work was inspired by my experiences here and the research that I did over the past month. Um, building these works both in New York and also here in the UAE, it quite encompasses all my experiences, uh, the culture, the place, the architecture, the feel, the people, and it's, I feel like this is a description and embodiment of UAE for me. Um, uh, the All African Festival, and as an artist, I think it's a celebration of all the arts uh, in its entirety, be music or arts or culture in diversity. And it's, it's, it's a good feeling to have that number of you know, diverse talents come together in one place to be celebrated in that kind of congested uh, period of time. As a little girl, I was always inspired by music, hip-hop, and R&B. And I always thought it'd be really cool to be a DJ, to be honest. And when I came here to the UAE, uh, one of my mentors, which is DJ Alad, he took me on as his, basically, apprentice. He said, you know what, Nicole, if you do three things, you get equipment, you get a laptop, and you get a software program, I'll teach you how to DJ. And I said, done. And the rest is history. Five years later, here I am. <laughs> I have been here now for 11 years, and it's been an amazing experience since day one. <laughs> All African Festival is an amazing experience. I am just honored to be a part of this experience, bringing cultures together, experiencing African culture and African music, and to be asked to be one of the DJs, I was just honored to be a part of the vision and the mission and I'm excited to be a, a part of it again this year. <laughs> I've been DJing in Dubai for about seven to eight years right now. Uh, to be quite honest, at first it was hard to get in because, you know, the African music hadn't come in that much, right, like a couple of years back, but right now it's actually, st it's like the main genre that's like topping charts right now. So like, there's a huge demand right now for African DJs compared to before. So it's actually a pretty nice and amazing time for us right now. What AFF does, or All, Af All Africa Festival, it brings different countries out of Africa. So we don't just experience music from a particular region in Africa. So we get from all squares of Africa, different types of music and cultures. So yeah, that's what it brings to the entertainment scene. I came here in 2015, so that's been uh, seven years. The music scene in Dubai, it's, uh, it's, it's broad and it's diverse. It's, uh, there's so many opportunities and so many uh, channels for people to explore here in Dubai. It's, uh, I mean, say it's so open. There's no one uh, genre or one channel that you can explore in Dubai. It's so many channels that if you are into the music scene, you can make it after hard work, of course, uh, but in a good way. AFF brings a, a platform that we've never seen in UAE or I may say anywhere in the world. Like as I say that uh, in Dubai it's a very diverse community. You got almost everybody from all over the world in UAE and uh, with that platform that you get from AFF, I may say it's, uh, for me, I think it's the biggest African festival in the world. Uh, because it's a three-day festival, and not only is it a three-day festival, it uh, encompasses so many uh, opportunities and solutions like uh, fashion, music, uh, and in that, I think it brings for DJs and for music and artists, it brings a very huge platform for you to be seen and for you to like present your, your art and your craft. This is a huge festival which gathers many, many people. Um, how do you go about maintaining the consistency throughout the years? Um, we always try to do our best to make sure that we are getting the right headliners, we're putting the right cultures together, even with the lineup. 
and the frequency of the music that is being played, we want to make sure that everything goes according to a particular rhythm or format. And uh, we are here in Dubai where we have to observe the prayer times. Mm. So during the course of the day, we have to shut down the stage at certain times of the day because we don't want to disturb the prayers. Oh, wow. So our program reflects that and every other uh, activity that is going on on stage actually also reflects that. Do you find any similarities with some of your other working experiences, be it from Nigeria or from the UK in operating here? Uh, over here, I would say it's a totally different type of uh, challenges you face. So in some parts of the world, you're faced with logistical issues or power issues or things like that. Over here, you're mostly faced with making sure you have the right team that understands what you need and what you need well ahead of time. So you make the necessary adjustments. If not, you would have to make some, you know, look for walkarounds, which sometimes could be expensive. Dubai does feel like an expensive city sometimes, but um, I guess it, it all has to do with also um, the climate within which you're operating. Um, but speaking of that, in terms of the audiences that you gather, what has been your strategy with this? So, because the event in itself was an ease meant to focus on not just Africans, but all the translations of African culture in diaspora that's gone out, we always try to make sure there is an equal representation of the several cultures we can get. Uh, obviously, we're limited by budget, depending on how much sponsorship we get. Uh, we try to go for the field and not just look for the things currently in the media or in the tradition or in the commercial side of things and bring out unique, um, unique performances and arts that we can showcase that even an African would be like, wow, I never knew that was from Africa. So those are the kind of things we hope and we want to continuously bring to light so people get to see that Africa as a continent has so many diverse nations and cultures and languages. And over the years, those that have migrated out have created their own uh, the, the culture has evolved, have created their own version of their Africa and that doesn't make them any less African, but rather we should celebrate it together as one. This is quite a story, it's quite remarkable and also um, beautiful to hear about a successful collaboration amongst family um, in, in a place where you would need buy-in from the local communities um, as we've been hearing. But where do you see Effie Gallery in the future? What does it look like? Uh, we don't like to think of the future of it because uh, if we try to imagine what, what is around us right now, it honestly wouldn't have happened. Everything's been very organic in our approach and we just, we just hope for the best. We don't like to envision what's, what's coming next. How do you go about the creative process of coming up with your lineup of artists and DJs and how all of that came together? Um, I think I'll pull that into the heart of the planning committee and what we all do together. Um, one of my main partners with this, who um, owns this gallery with her sons, um, there's one thing she always tells me and she says sincerity of purpose. So we always start with a foundation of sincerity of purpose wow. and why are we doing this? But with that, then you look at the diversity of the planning team. It's actually diverse. You have um, Elena Saar, who owns um, Savannah Creation, which is a huge fashion brand here. And, you know, she's, she's from Senegal. You have William Stenhouse, who runs the UAE African Networking Group. He's from the United States of America. You have Dee that I've already mentioned, and, and um, Kai I've already mentioned. And then you have Yvonne, who um, runs Travel Essence Magazine. She's from Zimbabwe. And then you have, obviously, myself, and then you have um, Tim, and you have Joe, who comes from Nigeria and runs yeah. Kiza. So it's, it's, it's a big mush. You have Delroy, who come, you have um, 
um, Heath, who comes from the US and he's an educator. So the room is full of people from different backgrounds, different experiences, and just based on that, we have no choice but to really come up with something that is strongly creative and really pushes it from all angles. Mm. And so in, in terms of the, the future, you are the visionary, where do you see it going? I see this as the biggest holistic celebration of African culture in all her many beautiful expressions in the world. And I see it happening no other place but in the most welcoming and the most accessible city. And to be honest, I call it Middle Earth, <laughs> Dubai. <laughs> um, I, I, that's where I see this going. I see this as the biggest. I always, um, and, and sometimes I get asked that question and people say, why not in Africa? And I say, well, Africa is not just a continent, it's her people and her people are all over the world. So why not celebrate it all over the world? Indeed. What limits us? What an insightful and exciting session, learning all about the All Africa Festival. I'm certainly excited to find out more and to see just how this festival continues to grow right here in Dubai. Thank you for watching and it's goodbye for now.